Hi friends, it's Miss Stern. How are you today? It's so nice that you joined me for a story. Before we start, would you please ask a grown-up if they would subscribe to the channel? Thank you. The story I have today is quite fun. It's called Grandma Drove the Garbage Truck. So let's read to find out what happens when grandma's sons get sick and grandma has to drive the garbage and pick up all the garbage before the big parade starts. Are you ready? Here we go. Ring. Grandma slapped the alarm clock beside her bed. Ring. Grandma opened one eye. She slapped the alarm clock again. Ring. It wasn't the alarm clock. It was the telephone. Hello, yawned Grandma. Ah, choo, sneezed a voice. Ma, I'm sick, sick as a dog. My stomach's churning, my eyes are burning, and my head's turning. It was Buster, Grandma's first son. Ma, there's no way I can drive the ah, ah, choo truck this morning. Grandma squinted at the calendar tacked beside her bed. Parade day of all days, she scolded. Well, never mind. We'll do fine without you. Get some rest, Buster. And Buster, for goodness sakes, use your handkerchief. Grandma hung up the phone. Grandma had been the in the garbage business for as far back as anyone could remember. She ran the office, answering the phone, opening the mail, and counting the money. Her three sons drove the trucks. For Grandma and everyone else, there was no bigger holiday than the 4th of July. Folks prepared for months building fancy floats, practicing marching songs, buying new outfits, hanging up flags. The town had to look spick and span for the big parade. Grandma stretched and hopped out of bed. Ring, ring, ring. Grandma held her toothbrush in one hand and picked up the phone with the other. Hello? She burbled. Cook her off, coughed a voice. Ma, I'm sick, sick as a dog. My eyes are burning, my head's churning, and my stomach's churning. It was Bert, Grandma's second son. Ma, there's no way I can run the cook her off com compactor this morning. Grandma glanced at the clock on the shelf. The parade starts at 10 o'clock, fretted Grandma. Well, never mind. We can manage without you. Get some rest, Bert. And Bert, for goodness sakes, cover your mouth when you cough. Grandma hung up the phone. Bering! Grandma held her coffee mug in one hand and answered the phone with the other. Hello, spluttered Grandma. Bring, hello, bring. It wasn't the telephone. It was the doorbell. There at the door stood Bill, Grandma's third and last son, with little Billy at his side. Bill didn't have to say a word. Grandma could tell his head was churning, his stomach was churning, and his eyes were burning. Bill was sick, sick as a dog. There was no way he could drive the truck, much, le much less run the compactor. Shameful, just shameful, making folks parade past garbage on the 4th of July, muttered Grandma. Well, never mind. Come in, Bill, and Bill, for goodness sake, sit yourself down in my comfy chair. Grandma eyed Bill. Then she eyed her littlest grandson, 
Thank goodness he looked healthy as a horse. Grandma grabbed a pair of Buster's old coveralls. She tossed her grandson a pair of greasy gloves. It looks like we've got a job to do, Billy, she said. A big job. Grandma clapped on Bert's best baseball cap and shoved her feet, slippers and all, into Bill's work boots. Billy ran to fetch to fetch three cushions from the couch, one for him and two for Grandma. Grandma gave Billy a boost, then Billy gave Grandma a hand. Grandma peered through the steering wheel. I sure hope I can drive this big old clunker. Grandma hollered as she revved the engine and released the brake. The garbage truck zoomed down the driveway. The mailbox, the mailbox, screamed Billy. But Grandma didn't hear. She was too busy looking to the left. The garbage truck skidded around the bend. My roses, my roses, shouted Roy Hardy. But Grandma didn't hear. She was too busy hauling trash cans. The garbage truck bumped down the lane. My clothesline, my clothesline, shrieked Edna Fillmore. But Grandma didn't hear. She was too busy working the compactor. The garbage truck raced across the avenue. My flag, my flag, squealed little Maggie Wells. But Grandma didn't hear. She was too busy backing up. The garbage truck swerved onto Main Street. The parade, the parade, yelled Billy. The parade! Grandma stood on the brake, but it was too late. The garbage truck screeched to a stop right in front of the all-star marching band. Grandma adjusted her glasses and tipped her hat. Banners, flags, and hats waved back. Grandma tapped the horn. Flutes, trumpets, and trombones tooted an encore. Grandma thumped Billy on the back. I guess I can drive this big old clunker any day, she chuckled. Three cheers for Grandma, shouted Billy. Then he scrambled up the front fender of the garbage truck. He proudly nestled the blue ribbon for most creative float in a wreath of Roy Hardy's best roses. What a perfect day for a parade! So what did you think? It was fun, wasn't it? Some things that you can do after the story that might be fun for you. How about if you set out your cars and trucks and toys and make your own parade and then write your own story? The other thing that might be good is if you draw a picture of the flag where you live and then make another flag for your very own family. So if you want some more ideas, ask a grown-up if they would go above to the link to my website, and I've got all kinds of information and activities for this story. So until next time, my friends, happy reading.